welcome to a special episode of Galaxy Marine's True Bass. Today we're on the Delta with Kent Brown and bass fishing legend D. Thomas. Hey, I'm Kent Brown, the host of the Ultimate Bass Radio Show, and we have got a special treat for you today on True Bass. You know this flip and stick I'm holding in my hand is over 35 years old. This is one of the original Fenwick D. Thomas flip and sticks. And the really cool part about this rod is uh, it was given to me years ago by BASS Elite Pro Gary Klein, and I imagine he probably stole it out of his rod locker. Uh, because this guy is a Hall of Fame member, a Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame member, a Bass Fishing Hall of Fame member, and a living legend in our sport of bass fishing. And joining me in the boat today, a guy that's been my mentor, my friend, and one of the best fishermen absolutely to ever grace the game of bass fishing, D. Thomas. So we're going to go run around the California Delta. We're going to talk a little bit about times of year, how to catch a few fish. Let's put our life jackets on. Let's get out here on the Delta and see if we can't catch a couple of fish, buddy. All right. Okay, we ain't putting no names on no map or on no wire or on no TV. I fish out here every weekend. I get a check with a lot of regularity, and I ain't giving all my good stuff away to the general public. <laughs> we'll talk about techniques. I'll tell you what you need to look for, the kind of lures to use, but you need to find your own water. Fair enough? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go down through and do a little crank and start with and see if we can get bit. D, how long have you been fishing the Delta? Uh, ever since I. Well, actually, I caught my first black bass ever was in the Delta. And I was probably, I was working in Castro Valley then. Been with Safeway two years. So I probably started fishing the Delta in about 1959 is when I started fishing the Delta. You can work out the numbers on that. It's been through a lot of changes, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, right there. See all them rocks up there? Yeah. That's what done it right there. Trying to protect the levees and stuff has really hurt the delta. They took a lot of trees out. You know, D, I think a lot of guys will be surprised to see you throwing a crankbait. I think the perception everybody has is all you ever do is flip. Well, I was throwing crankbaits long before I ever picked up a flipping stick. <laughs> it's all I used to fish was an old bomber. And uh, I didn't start flipping real seriously until about 19... Oh, 74. Uh, up till then, all I did was Thule dip, Kent. And that, that was with a 10-foot rod, right? 12-footer. 12 12-foot 12 stick, yeah. And the big reason why I'm, I'm throwing crankbaits right now is I'm searching for these fish. We're in the late spring, or late, we should be in the late spawn right now. It's the middle of the bay. These fish generally do their thing in late March and all through April. And then they started pulling off that bank. And uh, this time of year, I found that the uh, crankbait, topwater bait, if the water is nice and still, uh, Seiko's, those are the baits I would key in on right now down here. Because I think those baits there will catch the fish. Because this time of the year, the fish are generally right below the low water mark is where they're at. Because that's where they built their beds at. Right. They don't build the beds up on the bank. They build them just below the low water mark. And those fish are still down there now. The, the females that are spawned, they'll back off to that secondary break is where they'll go. And uh, the males, they'll stay with that fry, which will hang out around that nest for a while. So you think a lot of guys have a tendency to fish right over the top of the fish? Exactly. You catch so one more, and I'm going to put you in that camera boat. <laughs> Look at that. That was a bass behind D. Thomas. Was it a big one? No, it's just a little one. It's just a little one. Just a baby, D. You don't need to be filming him that much. Just a baby, <laughs> D. They can always edit it, you know, if you start I catching. warmed him up for you. Yeah, I figured that's what you did. Wanted that real bright red thing, didn't he? Yeah. That's just a little Berkeley Rattler. It's just a real bright little orange and red crankbait. 
Looks like the crawdads they eat down here. I want to turn around. Yeah. Go right back down there where we started at. Okay. And come through that bank with a flipping stick. Okay. And see, I think what the problem is when we ain't catching no fish. Tide ain't rolling out good enough yet. And I think that what we've done here is the fish are back up underneath the tulies. Or they're out on the secondary breaks, like I just said. You know, lipless crankbaits are a bait a lot of anglers fish down here on the Delta, be it a rattle trap, an LV500 from Lucky Craft, or the rattle R that Berkeley makes. These are great baits to fish, or great crawdad imitation. A couple things I do with it, I do swap out the hooks that come on the baits. Like a lot of the baits, hooks aren't real good on them. On my big orange and red crawdad baits, I normally swap them out with a red hook. It just gives a little more red flash to them. And when you're fishing these lipless baits through the grass, you want to fish them on braided line. You won't be able to pull that bait through that grass and snap it through there, maybe trigger a strike if you're fishing it with light mono or monofilament at all. The braided line is definitely the way you want to go with these lipless baits, but a good way to fish on the Delta and a fish catching bait all year long.